みなさん、こんばんは。私はマッシュウ日本です。今日一緒に新しい日本酒を飲みましょう。Hello everyone, this is Matthew in 日本 coming to you with yet another 日本酒 review. And today I am reviewing a wonderful Ginjo Nama from the Isono Sawa Sakagora based in Ukiha, Japan. Isono Sawa was founded in 1868 in a region of Japan famous for the quality of its water, which you may recall is one of the most important ingredients in the production of Nihonshu.、Uh, the area is known for having abundant spring water and is also known for having something called Shimizu Yusui, which is one of the 100 famous waters. End quote, in Japan.、Uh, their brewing begins in September and ends in April, with a great amount of care being given to both the production of the Nihonshu and its storage, because storage is also a very important factor. And a big part of this is also because of the fact that within that period, they produce all of the Nihonshu for the entire year. At least from their own Sakagura. So, beyond that, unfortunately, I have not been able to find a lot of information. Even on their own website, when I looked, I could not even find this specific Nihonshu listed. It is the same Nihonshu, it is the same Sakagura, so it's a bit of a mystery, one that I intend to solve. I can tell you, however, that this is a Ginjo Nama. You can see, in fact, even in the name itself. Uh, nama is a word that generally seems to mean pure or draft. So you'll often hear Nama beer. So this does seem to be at least what they're calling a draft Nihonshu.、Uh, it has fermented between 15 to 16%, which is about standard, it seems.、Um, and while I'm not certain, because I have not been able to find specific information about it, It seems to have a Nihonshu do of maybe one or two. I've heard that it seems to be un- slightly sweet, but not notably sweet and not notably dry. It's very much in the middle. However, because this is a Ginjo, I have elected to serve it cold. And now, let's pour. This is a very interesting smell, actually. Almost floral notes, if I'm going to be honest. Hmm. Okay. Minasan, Kampai. Oh. Ooh, that is interesting. So At first, you get a hint of sort of a butterscotch or vanilla flavor. It sort of transitions between maybe vanilla, butterscotch, and then it turns into a almost robust chocolatey flavor, which I never thought I would see again. After this guy here, I really did not expect to run into another chocolatey Nihonshu. But here it is.
Hmm. And upon a second drink, it picks up more of a herbal, noty quality to it that I have not noticed before. I enjoy this. Now, <clears throat> let's move on to the food. Today, based on the recommendation of a friend, we are going to match the Nihonshu with some sweeter foods. Here, we've got a kind of egg dish, whose name I actually have not learned. And here we've got a kind of tofu that has been deep fried with some vegetables mixed in. And finally, We've got something called Orosu Katsu, which is a kind of roast pork dish with egg and rice. All right, and now we're ready to pair. So first, minasan, itadakimasu. Let's start with the egg, shall we? That is interesting. For the briefest moment, the vanilla returns and then combines with the sweetness of the egg, producing an almost velvety milkshake-like quality. And then fades into something a little more floral or herbal. That's very interesting. Once you get to the second note, there's the subtlest hint of vanilla, but it just sort of fades away into a creamy, smooth, sweet flavor, almost, almost like a syrup. I can't think of a precise flavor to describe it, maybe more of your average pancake syrup. Not overpowering, though. Not enough to ruin the enjoyment of it. It's... It's a Nihonshu that should pair well with some other egg-related dishes. I'd almost recommend trying it with bacon and eggs. In fact, I think I will have to try that. That might be a very interesting experiment. But now let's move on to the tofu. The tofu is not as sweet. It's more on the dry side, so I'll be curious. Mm. When I said dry, I did not mean the food was exactly dry. What I meant was it's a clean flavor. When I paired it with the tofu, for the briefest moment there was an almost coffee-like or dark chocolate quality to it. A bit on the bitter side, not overpoweringly so.
Yes, that was a definite dark chocolate with a hint of almost a sweetness of, I guess syrup is the best way to describe it again. It's surprising. It seems like every time I pair this with the food, there's a different interaction. I have not consistently gotten the same quantities with everything so far. I guess that makes it quite interesting. It's an unpredictable Nihon Shu, for sure. Let's try it with the katsu, or the pork and rice dish. I can't say that pairing brought out anything interesting. In fact, it seemed to cancel out the sweetness. There were slightly herbal notes. Uh, I cannot think of the... Maybe sage was the hint I got. Unfortunately, not the most pleasant pairing. It's okay, but you'd have to really like sage. Again, every bite is different. <laughs> this is an Ihoncho I'm going to have to experiment with more. That time, I got a very clear, almost coffee latte. In fact, yeah, it was a light coffee latte flavor. And then it kind of faded into a almost caramel. And then back into the herbal qualities, but... This is one of the most interestingly interactive Nihon shoes I've run into. I would love to figure out more about why specifically this Nihon shoe seems to change so frequently, unless it's by some na or, uh, on some level just unstable. That's not entirely a bad thing. It does make it hard to precisely recommend how to pair it. I would definitely say stick with sweeter foods. Uh, maybe sample a little bit with some of the drier side. This could be a very interesting Nihonshi to pair with McDonald's, now that I think about it. Which actually brings me to the end of the lesson and, or the end of the review, and few announcements. So. You might have noticed that this video is much brighter. That's because for you, the fans, I have bought a light. It seems to be doing a good job and it hopefully will continue to light me for many videos to come. I also have another announcement. Sometime in the next week or two, I will be doing an interview. 
We have set up the questions, we've arranged the time. We were supposed to film soonish, but we've decided to delay slightly. However, you can look forward in the next two or so weeks to an interview between myself and Nihonshu TV. First, he will be coming onto my channel and answering some questions in English, and then I will be going on to his channel and answering some questions in Japanese. We're really looking forward to it. We're coming up with some ideas for future projects we can work to on together. And I have also, just this very day, in fact, met with another friend of mine, and we are planning some other projects, mostly local, where we'll try to go to local eateries, sake, bar, sake bars, and sake gudas. We may also start doing some special episodes where the history and culture of、uh, Nihonshu was introduced by、uh, this friend of mine. And, well, really, who, will, who knows what else? I can promise you I am changing things up. This next month, you should, should see、uh, l- quite a few changes. Maybe not a lot, but I'm planning on starting to introduce more foreign food. And maybe once a month, I will have a special foreign guest on, usually one of the students from my school who doesn't really have a lot of experience with Nihonshu, so that they can share their first experiences with you. But for now, things are very, very interesting right now, I know. I just want everyone to try to remember that it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with the, peop- with the person next to you. They are human beings. I don't care what religion or po- you know, political belief or whatever you have. Let's just please try to talk to each other. Be friends. At least try to find some common ground. And if you can't agree, that's okay too. You can agree to disagree. All I ask is that everyone please try to keep calm, try to look for the good things in life, and always remember there is hope, there is possibility, and there is the unknown waiting for you just beyond the horizon. So, don't be afraid to go beyond it. Until next time, please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Please stay happy. And please try Nihonshu. And also, if you like my content, please click like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment. You can also check out my Twitter and Instagram. The links will be provided in the chat box below. For now, take care, everyone. Oyasumanazai.